Welcome to today's edition of the City News Show. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. I'm coming to you from Five Beach here in Tema New Town, where hundreds of residents in and around this area for days have been trooping to this beach, hoping to cleanse themselves from a curse. Now, this curse, we are told, has been inflicted on them by a chief priest in this area, who says its ornaments, including gold, etc., have been stolen by a resident here in this town. In this edition, we'll be bringing you details of this interesting developing story. And later, we'll take you to the northern region, specifically Yendi, where there have been clashes. What is leading to these clashes? We'll be bringing you details. We'll now go back to the studio with Omaru Sanda to bring us other stories. And still coming up. And in other stories here in Accra, the police in Medina and Adenta have cleared residents who blocked the road this afternoon to protest the death of yet another pedestrian crossing that highway. Also, a former minister deputy in charge of power alleges a 33% increase in electricity tariffs on the blind side of consumers. of residents hoping to cleanse themselves from this curse. Now, a lot of theories have surrounded the death of between 19 and 14 people in this area. For example, we are picking up reports that the deaths are not directly related to this curse, but rather due to an outbreak. But let's get details of this and find out what exactly the issue is. And I've been joined by the Tema Regional Correspondent, Elvis Washington, to give us details of this story. Elvis, where exactly are we and what is the story around this story? So, uh, we are currently at um, Five Beach. This place is actually referred to as the Five Beach here. And it's within the Tema Manhian in Tema East constituency. And predominantly, predominantly, this area is a fishing, fishing community which houses um, some major organizations such as the uh, Unilever Company of Ghana, uh, the Fishing Harbor. And then behind us, you can see the car power ship. Right. So for, far, for about three days now, hundreds of people have been trooping to this beach over issues to do with a curse allegedly slapped on them by a fetish preach. What do we know? Well, Vivian, um, on Tuesday morning, we woke up to this um, news that uh, a disgruntled chief priest within Tema New Town have actually uh, placed a curse on residents who have actually stolen some few uh, things from his um, shrine. And the things they stole, uh, among them are some jewelry, uh, some monies and then also um, some gold ornaments. So as a result of that, this man um, got angry and then um, sent some information out there to inform the public that anyone who has information of the said um, item, item should actually report to his shrine or face his um, wrath. Who is this chief priest and what is his locus here in this area? Well, um, you know, this is a traditional area. And the chief priest is also one of the Wulome, but unfortunately he is not a legitimate chief priest. He's a disgruntled one. So he's not recognized at the um, Tema Traditional Council. So he's, he, he's, he's here, but he's not actually recognized anyway. So for about three days, the residents have been trooping in. What have they been saying? Well, um, since um, the man announced that anyone with information 
um, about the items, uh, failure to report would result in some deaths. Indeed, there were some deaths that were happening within um, the area. So he again came out that um, if you do not want to be part of this, this particular death, then it means that you have to come to the sea to purify yourself for three consecutive days. So from Tuesday, um, residents have been trooping in here to actually take their bath in, this, uh, in the sea here. And this is not the only sea. This is not the only um, shore or the... Um, so you can use here. any sea to cleanse of yourself, course, and it should be within, within the, this, this area. Now, you've spoken to some authorities over this situation and the numbers involved in the death. What have they been saying? Is it as a result of this case, or it has to do with something else? Well, um, community members will tell you that, well, they believe um, what the man is saying is true. So the deaths are mysterious. You see a friend or a brother um, today, the next moment you hear the person is dead under some unfortunate circumstances. So they believe that indeed um, the man's case is actually working. And to some of them, they think that no, uh, probably it could be an outbreak. And I spoke with um, the traditional authorities, um, Nishipi, uh, who is actually the official spokesperson of the um, traditional council, who actually told me that um, for them, this um, or these deaths are not as a result of any um, case placed on anybody, but they are uh, natural occurrences. And he gave some instances um, surrounding some of these deaths. Can you we confirm that the deaths are between 9 and 14? Have we been able to confirm those figures? For, um, well, and you, if you talk to people, the least number they give you is 9, and some, the highest number I've heard so far is 14. So I can say that probably between 9 and 14 people have lost their lives in, this, in a space of nine days. So we're also picking up reports that some health officials have been here to assess the situation and to really confirm whether it's indeed an outbreak or it has to do with something else. What do we know about that? Well, um, Vivian, yesterday the Regional Health Directorate together with the District Health Directorate were all in this community trying to pick up um, pockets of information around. But um, what I was told this morning is actually that they do not see anything related to any uh, cares or whatever, but they are still investigating the issue and will officially communicate to the public as and when they gather something substantial to be communicated. So for three days, hundreds of residents have been trooping to this beach, hoping to cleanse themselves of a cat. Now, I'm going to speak to some of the residents to give us details of why they've been trooping to this beach to cleanse themselves. Let's speak to the residents who've been coming here for days hoping to cleanse themselves from this cast. And one of them is Jemima. Now she has been here since morning hoping to cleanse herself because her parents have told her if she doesn't, she may die from this cast. Jemima, how are you? Why are you here? Who told you about this? My mother. Has your mother herself been here? Yeah. So what exactly happened with the, the chief priest? Um, they said uh, on, uh, on the main and one of the things uh, that's all. So he placed a curse on the, the people. Do you know other people apart from your mother who have been here? Yeah. Who else do you know who has been here? Some of my neighbors. So you believe from what you've done today, you will be free of that care? Yeah. How long did you stay in the water? For about 20. You stayed in for 20. When did you get here? Um, around um, 3. three. You came here at, at dawn? No, no. This just this. Afternoon. You came no, in the morning? Like was it just about four. quarter to... So you came around 12 o'clock yeah. to cleanse yourself. You stayed in the water for 20 minutes. And now you believe you're cleansed from this. Yeah. Jemima, thank you very much. And we wish you all the best. Okay, thank you. We'll bring you another resident um, who's also been in the water, hoping to cleanse himself or herself from the cancer. So let me speak to another resident. He's been here already, cleansed himself, and actually has been bringing others to cleanse themselves. Nicolas Abetan. 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 Nicolas Abetan.
So that's a resident of Tema Newtown who's been here, brought his family to cleanse themselves. Now earlier, our correspondent Elvis Washington filed a report. He's been here from day one. Let's see what he has. Tema Newtown, which falls within the Tema East constituency, is predominantly a fishing community and has purportedly been hit with what residents and indigents term as mysterious deaths. The residents allege that in the past 10 days, between 9 and 14 people have mysteriously lost their lives. According to them, a known disgruntled chief priest of the town, Agba Faiche, Ni Abo Kome, announced that the deaths were as a result of a curse placed on the town owing to robbery activities carried out by some indigents. The only way to curtail the deaths, they believe, is to purify themselves in the sea for three consecutive days, as directed by Agba Foyche, Ni Abo as a Thursday afternoon. When City News visited the town, the shores were full of activity as numerous residents were trooping to the various seashores to obey the directive. Some of them spoke to City News. Um, I'm Nia Jay, speaking from Semani Town. Um, quite recently, a lot of people are dying as a result of um, robbery, which happened to one of the chief priests in town. And so, um, a couple of people are dead so far, which is a lineage to um, the robbery. And so we were asked to go to the seashore and take some back, um, which is a result of cleanliness. And so we're doing this. Now, uh, almost uh, 12 people have died now. And the chief priest, the chief priest in this time of year said the people should come and swim in the sea. Maybe, maybe they are going to, uh, it's going to abort those, those things in the city now. So far, as of now, one of, nobody is my family members, but I know them very well. So I, I, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot decide that maybe it's not my family, so I, I won't swim. But we have to swim. So that's the reason why we are in the sea to swim. My name is Sadie. I am in the house that my brother called me. There are some, they said something is going on. Tamanita. 
so I should come and pass the seat. That's why I'm here. And they said some of person were still some money. And they said if you don't know and the person take the money and come and buy it from me, you two are inside. So I should come and pass the seat. That's why I'm here to pass the seat. However, the spokesperson for the Tema Traditional Council, Nishipi Amas Ropum, held a contrary view to the mass swimming and purification process. Uh, in the spirit of 10 days, we have recorded nine deaths, which we think is on the high side because it's unprecedented. So, immediately, what we need to do is to meet and then get to the bottom of the matter. We haven't settled on any 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 cost yet because if you are not careful and you put out the wrong information, means that you'll be prescribing a wrong you know antidote, which can even be fatal because if it is a virus issue, then you are attributing it to the spiritual. And people will not mind to keep the environment clean or observe good sanitary conditions. They may think that all they need to do is to just bath the water and they'll be okay, which is also fatal. So we are very circumspect in whatever statement we put out there. We want to be careful, we don't throw the town into fear and panic. That will also result in further fatalities. So we are cautious. Two of the deaths are accidental. One was stabbed, the other one was stolen. Third issue had to be somebody with a social event who was receiving treatment at General Hospital. We don't know the cause yet. Somebody also collapsed and died when he heard of the death, death of her daughter, his daughter. You see, so this can be a hypertensive related case. So how do you jump to conclusion that somebody has been cursed? I want to use this video and advise people to stay calm until we get to the bottom of the matter. Whether it is spiritual, scientific, or coincidental. For City News, Elvis Washington reporting from Tema Newtown. Well, now we're back to the studio with Omar Sander to bring us other stories. Indeed, and you've heard there the residents telling Vivian Kailoko that they were baffing because they were told that there was a case which they needed to cleanse in the sea. Now, there's an official statement coming through from the Ministry of Health with uh, support from the ministry or the, the, the agency that's a Ghana Health Service. And they said they have gone to the community and conducted some investigations. Indeed, they have sat through community meetings and the official figure they have for the number of deaths is 16, according to a statement that was issued uh, by the Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service. And these deaths were recorded at Tema Harbour Electoral Area and the Awudum Electoral Area, all within the Tema East Municipality. And this happened between the period of 29th October and 7th November 2018. Now, the persons, according to the health service, died from different medical conditions that are not linked and are not infectious. It says the possible causes of death included the following. Knife wounds were recorded, severe head injuries, acute alcoholic intoxication. There was one incident of cardiac failure, other issues of lymphatic filariasis. There was one which was recorded as with uh, being cellulitis and ectopic pregnancy. Other causes that were recorded, uh, we are told, include gynecological. Now, majority of these listed causes of death are actually lifestyle related, according to the Ghana Health Service. And the statement further added that the causes of death have been uh, observed as non-infectious and from different conditions, mostly medical, with no evidence of epidemiological linkage, according to the Ghana Health Service. Trauma has also been linked to this particular death. So if you're watching in Tema uh, Mahian or Tema Newtown and you're obeying your fetish priest, the Ghana Health Service says scientifically the claim cannot be proven. This is City Newsroom on City TV. Let's move on to some other stories and come now to the Greater Accra region, specifically in Accra, where there was chaos this afternoon on the main Medina Adenta Highway as residents have blocked the road after a speeding vehicle knocked down a student who was with the West African Senior High School. Over 100 people are said to have been knocked down on the stretch uh, since the beginning of 2018 due to the lack of footbridges and the 40 traffic lights. City News' Eugenia Tinkran reports 
that the lady who was knocked down on Thursday afternoon has since uh, been taken to the morgue. <laughs> Residents of Adensa Medina here in Accra for the past few days have been complaining about the lack of food bridges, which they say has resulted in the loss of lives of pedestrians. Now, they intended demonstrating on Monday, but today another pedestrian, a first year student of the West Africa Senior High Secondary School, was hit by another vehicle. Now, this angered the people who charged onto the streets bend lorry ties and block the 12 lane stretch now a handful of police officers who were called onto the scene were not able to control the crowd which was getting thicker by the minute they initially tried to lobby their way out but the people would not budge what they were chanting was no bridge no road They said they wanted the bridge constructed immediately. The police had no choice but to call for reinforcement, and that was brought. And that was when the melee started. They fired tear gas, and some alleged that there were live shots too at the crowd. In the end, there were casualties. Some people were hurt, and there were reports that one person was killed in the process. Relative calm has returned as I speak. The traffic which was blocked by the people has been cleared and traffic is flowing freely now. Now, if you've been following our platforms, you know that the residents have been protesting the lack of food bridges on the road, saying they would embark on a demonstration next week over the unavailability of food bridges on the highway. The Member of Parliament for the Adentan constituency, Yao Boabian Samoa, spoke about the recent developments on CTTV's Face to Face with Godfrey Akoto Wafo. Several people have died on the Adentan Highway. I'm not too sure about the numbers yet, but no death is acceptable. And this weekend in particular was very bad because there's been agitation to deal with the matter and all that. And there's a sense that people felt that oh, maybe uh, the response had not been quick enough. But I can assure you, I can assure you, no politician would like to burn their votes. I'm a politician. I seek the votes of the people who are having those problems there. And therefore, we cannot sit aloof for something like that to go on. There's action in the background. There's action going on. But we also must situate it in the larger situation, like I said. Six people gone, Bozu Junction. Is it due to the road, due to carelessness, due to lack of maintenance? What is happening on our roads? Six people gone, in Bota, in the central region. What is happening to us? And then, Madina, should the lights have been on? Lights were installed in 2016. What is happening? These are all questions that we are asking, and the answers are not too clear yet. But I can assure you that uh, I'm not a happy man, just like you said. I am deeply sad. I am worried about uh, families who have lost relatives. Have you visited some of them? We are in the process of doing that. We are in the process of doing that. So as we stand now, as we stand now, I want to assure the families who are losing people, that we are deeply sympathetic and that government will not let this matter continue. Now, today's incident is coming just a day after the Director General of the Motor Traffic and Transport Department of the Ghana Police Service, that's uh, the Commander, CUP Christian Tete Yohuno, instructed the regional MTTD command to deploy more men to the Adenta Madina Ebri Road to check over speed in another road offences. On the standard of care line on we, the road users, uh, that is the drivers, and also things that are put in place to make pedestrians to have their safety when they are crossing. Uh, if you look at the NY Highway, to some extent you realize that there are some places, you know, even you know, the, 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 the barriers that they made, made it very difficult for somebody to cross. 
uh, and that alone also serves the uh, purpose of saving lives. Uh, but here on this agenda highway, I think there's a need for us to get more food bridges to save the situation. And um, when that is also done, it will, it, will, it will reduce the accidents on the highway. Human beings, drivers, as much as we talk to them, they still do the same thing. But I think uh, very soon we'll try to put some men around that area. Um, we, can, we can put some men on the highway at least uh, to check speeding, to check speeding. So uh, the, we will entreat the regional commander, NTTD, to ensure that he positions some men on that uh, highway uh, to check the speeding. At least that will be the temporary measure that we have to adopt. Now. So I think uh, with immediate effect, uh, I will instruct the regional uh, NTTD commander to put men, because we don't have to wait until Lives are being lost, they're being lost, and being lost as a result of uh, this type of speed. So let's do something to check the drivers for now. So that was a directive from the MTT boss, but has that directive been implemented or obeyed? City News' is Anshelly Zio was there to check for City News. They are here to help pedestrians use the road safely, manage traffic, and restore sanity on this highway, which has become an accident-prone zone. The death toll on this stretch increases daily, and only a handful of police personnel could be spotted on the stretch. Here at the SDA junction, where most of the accidents occur, none could be found. Pressure on the government to complete the abandoned food bridges has escalated in the past weeks. One cannot be certain whether they or their relatives will live to see another day when they cross the road. Worried about the situation, residents of Medina and Adenta, after a town hall meeting, have decided to stage a vigil on the streets on Monday 12th of November to press home their demands and many observers described the plan as a laudable one. The accident that we're working in here, it's, it's normal for someone to die on this road. It's just a normal thing. I can be standing here and a car will knock me down. The drivers say, I don't know whether they drive carelessly or the license that they are holding is a TV license. They don't respect the pedestrian on this road. And the food brief, you see this one here, constructed. I don't know when they started and I don't know when it will be completing. I don't know why all these things are happening. Like the food bridges here, we would have been crossing it by me. I'm, I'm about to cross the road right now. So I'll be watching like a baby before I cross the road. While the food bridge are standing. One is here, the other one is there, hanging in the air. Now white elephant. People now put their billboards on the food bridge. What is meant for pedestrians to cross road with? I may be leading, not to join. I may be leading the demo for the peace walk. Yes. Sure, I will. Yeah, take note of my face. I will. Yeah. Yes, I will join, I will join. Yes, it's really good, and I think it's really going to help Ghanaians. So. Mar Madina Road is really causing problems and, you know, accidents everywhere, so I think it's a good one. Yes, I'm really going to join you guys, yes. Yes, I will join, and I think it's a good idea. If the gold trust will be going to the so the road will be full of students, so I think it's a good idea for all of us to go on Monday. I will join. Do you see the youth? Everybody is annoyed because the killing is too much. The drivers, I don't know the government what they are doing about this footbridge. It's been a while they've not fixed it. For years now, imagine every week a car knocks somebody every week. How many are they going to kill in a month? This thing is too much. It's becoming, who knows tomorrow it will be you or me. So on Monday, all the youth are coming out to demonstrate to the government. This thing is coming too much. I will even go out to organize. People will come. A number of people. Imagine the youth around. Everybody is coming out to demonstrate. On this stretch, the street lights are not working. The traffic lights are broken down. The footbridges are not completed. But on Monday, residents of Adenta and Medina will stage a peace walk in a bid to get them fixed. Reporting for City News from the SDA Junction, and Shirley Zewu. 
So that peace work that Anshelly talked about was preempted by today's uh, spontaneous uh, pouring out on the street by residents after the killing of that student of WAS. And uh, one person who has followed this story more than most in the city newsroom is Caleb Kuda, and he's joined me on City Newsroom. Caleb, you're welcome. So how did we get here, the trajectory of events? Okay, so since last year, 2018, uh, this death will be the 194th we've recorded. It's interesting that many have gone unreported. But um, last week, Friday at night, it was past 10 p.m., and I got a call that the residents had blocked part of the road because the car had hit someone and run. Another car had run over here. I didn't believe it. So I, I went to the scene to see for myself what had happened. At the time, the military had come in to restore calm at their place. But I must say that the protest I saw that evening cannot be compared to what we have seen now. And during the week, we had conversations on the safety breakfast show about this. We went back. I mean, later in the day, we got another call that an elderly woman has also been hit to death. This was around Firestone. So we went there, did that report. We returned. The day was just about ending. And then we had distress calls that yet another person, this time a student of West Africa Senior High School, has been killed. Interestingly, She's not the only person to die on that road today. The assembly member in the area tells us that one other resident died earlier. But that didn't catch the attention of the media. So it tells you that people have been dying mm. in silence. So it's almost more than one day, one death, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. And the, to think that a contractor, we are told, would need some 90 days before he starts work, that according be, to the member of parliament. So you can multiply the number of deaths then. Now... To this incident means that issues got to a head, didn't they? Because there was a planned vigil for Monday. Yes, there was. So apparently, I mean, like I told you early on, it was last night that the people really got infuriated by the recurrence of such deaths and decided that they, they blocked the road at mm. the time. And the mm. military came in, curled it. So thereafter, that's when we saw images of posters that the people declaring they are going to... Uh, take a peace walk later, um, and then we are understanding there's going to be a vigil to, uh, tomorrow. Monday night. There'll be a vigil, a peace march, yes. and then there'll be a vigil which will come What earlier. is the mood in the community following today's events and all the events of the past? If you speak to children in the area, they have seen countless number of times where people have died, people very close to them. So the children are terrified, same are their mothers. The youth are really angry. And they are infuriated that every day their lives should be truncated as though there were some stray animals. Mm. So people are really angry and they want to see immediate action. I think they will do anything to the see The Tema Accra motorway is a highway. And this is a motorway that is usually not meant for people to be crossing and for people to be building along these stretches. So it is unpardonable for someone to attempt to cross. And it would be understandable if someone is knocked down on a highway like that. Tell me how different is this Medina Ebori Highway, considering the residential areas dotted along that highway? So this particular road cuts across very heavily dense area. We're talking about Medina. We're talking about Adenta. So Perry Urban for Adenta, getting close to Ebori, and then heavily choked for Medina, mm -hmm. Zongo Junction in particular from Firestone. So mm -hmm. we have a heavy, uh, heavily populated uh, network mm -hmm. of communities along that particular stretch. Mm -hmm. And so even though from, uh, say, Oponglo or even Shiashi towards Legon, Oponglo and all of those places, these places are not heavily populated, and so cars are speeding. Interestingly, these places have traffic lights. Now, when you get into the township, there's an overhead. Many people are cruising over that, mm -hmm. and they are running to Firestone, where there is no traffic light. The footbridge there has not been completed, mm -hmm. and there are bushes in the median. So people are calculating to cross the first lane, to cross the third and fourth and seventh. You know, that kind of thing is mm, a wide mm, stretch. Mm. If I had to take you through, it's a 3.6 kilometer total dis distance of e each footbridge. Okay. And then the distance an, between yes, footbridges. And then the average distance between them is 600 meters. Okay. And then each footbridge, the length is about 60 meters. If you wanted to climb. Absolutely. Do we know the width of the road? I, I, I do not know, but it's quite huge. 
it's about seven lanes if you put everything together. Outer lanes and inner lanes. Absolutely. So Thank you very much, yeah. Caleb Kuda of the City Newsroom. This is City Newsroom on City TV coming to you from number 11, Dr. Martin Loop in Adabraka in Accra. I am Umaru Sandamad. And tonight I'm here with Vivian Kailoko. Now, one person has been killed and another injured in a clash at Nakpachi, a village in the Yindi municipality in the northern region. The deceased has been identified as the chief imam of Nakpachi, Adams Al Hassan. Please see the clash occurred after a farmer shot and killed, guess what, a pig belonging to a Konkoba man. The farmer was left injured and several houses have been torched. There is more in this report. Following the clash between Dagombes and Konkombes at Nakpache in the Yendi municipality of the northern region, some residents in the villages in the Nanumba north have fled their communities to Bimbila for fear of reprisal attacks. The Liposi community, where two days ago there was confusion over sighting of a yam market, is now a ghost town as women and children have all fled to Bimbila, leaving only men. Some of the concombers are appealing to Nanumbes to return as there is nothing in their community. I wish to serve our Nanumba brothers and concombers to let us all come together, forget the past, avoid conflict. Let us live as brothers and sisters. Let us live in harmony, in peace. There's no need fighting each other. There's law. The law is working. The constitution is working. If there's any issue we need to address, let us use the law to address any issue. But let us avoid conflicts. Our brothers and sisters who have left, abandoned their home because of the situation, I'm appealing to them to come back to their homes. So, uh, will you call some to come? To, to, to exercise vision and see what happens next. For now, we cannot decide as to what to do. We'll ask them to uh, stay back and then see what happens next. The municipal chief executive for Nanumba North, Abdullah Yaqub, together with some assembly men, visited the community to assure them of peace. He spoke to City News. We all heard what happened in Nakbache this morning. The situation has been brought under control. You are coexisting before this problem. I've come to tell you that I want you to still continue to coexist as what? One people, Nanumbes and what? Kukumbes. We haven't got any problem as far as uh, 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 what? Uh, settling or what? Living together is concerned. So we shouldn't bring what happened in Nakpachi to come to what? Our, our district. So that's why I'm going around to, to plead with everyone calm down and allow the law to, part, to take this own part, of course. National executive member of Koya, Grundo Timothy, also narrates to City News. What we heard was that uh, a Koko man, a Koko man and her piece went to uh, the woman man's farm. And when he got to the farm, he shot the pig. So the Koko man went to pick his dead pig. So when he got there, the woman shot, the woman man shot him too. That escalated to a different thing. They are not actually involved. Okay. Are you getting that? Yes. But um, our Dogoma counterparts, because that was a Dogoma man, they perceive it in a different uh, way. Okay. Thinking that maybe we, the Dogomas, are also going to take actions. Meanwhile, we are not ready to do such a thing. Okay. Uh, we saw most of them running and rushing to Bimbala with their families. We even tried to stop most of them, telling them, trying to make them know that it is not every Kukumba that is involved in it. Okay. It is a particular uh, community. Okay. So they should leave it for the security to do whatever they want to do. Okay. City News can, however, report that the tension is just at Liposi. In Binchara Tanga, both Kukumbas and Nanumbas were seen sitting together playing games. At Bakwaba, though, it was a market day. The usual busy nature of the place was not the same. This is Brunyansi community, a community in the Nanumba North District. Here, all the Dagomba houses, they are all vacated in their homes. I am told it's them with only two women in the group. They all ran to Bimbila. And we are here meeting the Kukumbas. The Kukumbas are saying uh, they are not part, but things happen somewhere. So they are asking the Kukumbas and the uh, Nanumbas to come back to the community so that they will continue to live peacefully. Mohammed Aminu M. Alabira, 
reporting for City News. This is the City Newsroom. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. And I am Umaru Sanda Amadu. When we return, a former deputy power minister alleges a 33 increase in electricity tariffs on the blind side of you and I. Don't go away. City TV is live. City TV is a free-to-air digital channel. On a digital TV, please press menu on your remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a multi-TV digibox. Tune into City TV and experience your world. City TV. It's your world. We spice up your mornings with culturally enriched conversations, social interviews, and policy-oriented discussions that will keep you updated on the progress of the nation. Those security guys who were supposed to protect them, I'm sure by now somebody must have all of them arrested. They must all be arrested because it's an unprovoked attack. Join the Breakfast Daily team Monday through Fridays from 7.30 a.m. to 10. Let your voice be heard with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. Join us for breakfast daily, only on City TV. Deputy Power Minister John Jinapo is alleging a 33% backdoor increment in electricity tariffs. Now, he says the work plan of ECG presented to Parliament shows or indicates an increase in the tariff which the independent power producers attribute to a depreciation in the value of the city which has affected charges. Here's more. In March this year, the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, PURC, announced a reduction in electricity tariffs. But former Deputy Minister of Power, John Jinapo, alleges that there has been a backdoor increment amounting to some 33%. What is the basis of this allegation? Here is John Jinapo. The Electricity Company of Ghana laid their work plan before Parliament, which is also mandatory. When I checked and did the analysis, I realized that this amount has been increased by 33% to an amount of 52.7 Ghana pesos per kilowatt hour. It means that there's a 33% increment in the composite bulk generation tariff, which ultimately is passed on to you, the consumer. When I inquired, the reason was that the IPPs claim that they charge in dollar terms. And so when the city depreciates, they wish to pass that on. But I'm maintaining that that is illegal because under Section 19 of the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission's Act, only the PURC has the mandate to announce tariffs. The PURC is also mandated to ensure that it rules out the automatic adjustment formula. The automatic tariff adjustment formula ensures that exchange rate differentials, fuel prices, and all the other charges, especially those that are passed throughs is reflected in the tariff. He says the minority will fight what they call an illegality to the very end of the matter. And an affront to parliament itself, called Parliament Passed Act 538. How long has this been going on? This has been going on since the second quarter. If you compound this or accumulate this into a year, it means that you, the unsuspecting consumer, 
you the innocent consumer, you are paying 1.58 billion Ghana CD within one year. That is the amount these utilities are charging you in an illegal way. And so first of all, I'm serving notice that I'm writing to the PURC to compel them to restore the tariff back to the 42.9 and also refund the money that has been illegally charged consumers back to consumers. But Chairman of the Mines and Energy Committee of Parliament, Emmanuel Kwesi Jenfi, says John Jinapo is just being dishonest. It is never true, anyway. Not to the customer, not to the consumer. It has never happened, anyway. And I'm surprised our uh, colleagues from the minority are being misingenuous and mischievous about this uh, issue that happened at the committee. What ECG uh, uh, needs the support of the committee to champion that cause for them? It is never true. Nothing, nothing of that sort. It's just mischievous. No, yes, you see, PRC, Public Utility Regulatory Commission, has invited the utilities to submit proposals for the next review of tariffs. ECG has made a case to PRC. So when the committee met them, this is what they put before us that PURC has approved 42.98. According to him, there will be further engagement with the ACG on the matter of their financial losses. It means they are making a loss of the, 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 the 42.98 and 59. So if you make the difference, it is a loss to ECG. And they wanted the committee to help in the next revision of the tariffs by PURC so that they can operate uh, without a loss. And that is simple. And what we ask ECG to come to the committee again so that we will have a way out during the next review of tariffs. Now, the campus of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology remains empty as reopening date for the university, which was slated for today, did not happen. This is because government and labor unions at the university are yet to agree on the members that will serve on the new governing council. There's more in this report. Halls of the university remain closed as only the hall managers are seen at the various halls. The lecture halls have also remained closed with police and military presence still felt on campus. Few staff members were also spotted at some offices at the main administration block. No students were cited on campus to respond to the reopening date which was announced by government some two weeks ago. Members of the Teachers and Education Workers Union of the University are continuing with their meetings to protest the delay in the reconstitution of the governing council. Reporting from the KNUST campus, I am Hafiz Tijani for City News. Now, the Interior Minister, Ambrose Derry, has told Parliament the findings of investigations into the conduct of 46 police officers repatriated to Ghana from South Sudan for sexual misconduct will be made public once it's ready. According to him, a UN independent body is investigating the issue together with a team of investigators from the police service. The policemen who were brought back in February this year have been reintegrated into the service as the ministry awaits the outcome of the investigation. Responding to questions on the floor of Parliament, Ambrose Derry said the investigative report will be ready by the end of this year. In February this year, 46 officers of the formed police unit of the Ghana Police Service were repatriated from a UN mission in South Sudan over allegations of sexual exploitation. Interior Minister Ambrose Derry was on the floor of Parliament to answer questions on the state of investigations into the matter. He indicated that the investigative report will be made public as soon as it is ready. The matter is currently being investigated and in due course the outcome will be made available. In line with the Ghana Police Service commitment in fighting sexual exploitation and abuse-related cases in the field missions, a three-member three team of investigators were dispatched to South Sudan on 11th March 
2018 to also investigate the matter. Ambrose Derry also said that some officers, part of the 46 man contingent, had been interdicted. Attorney General's remit. Attorney General will tell us this report that I have, ABC are capable for this or that. So that is why I cannot answer to that step to say that we have an investigation group that is taking the, uh, the, taking the investigation. They are almost complete and it will go to Attorney General. And on both sides, we are collaborating effectively. The available leader of the House, Kwisiame, our chairman, indicated that the House must take the right to information bill at the consideration stage after questions were answered by the Interior Minister. Very well. Item number seven. The right to information bill 2018 at the consideration stage. Uh, beginning consideration of the right to information bill, the House actually today devoted a healthy dose of time towards um, looking at the clauses, about four of them in about two hours, uh, from around just past midday to about 2 p.m., consideration of the bill was taken into full gear and not even persistent calls by some members uh, on the excuse of quorum to suspend sitting uh, was that done. The Speaker actually uh, based on his powers on standing order three, had to suspend the standing of orders of the House to put into full motion the consideration of the RTI bill, for which some clauses were considered today. Bill from the Parliament House. I am Duke Menso Poko reporting for City News. Now, all runabouts in the Tamale metropolitan area and the Sagnarigo municipality have been abandoned. The city authorities' failure to maintain the existing runabouts has made the locations unattractive. City News' Abdul, Abdul Karim Natogma has more. The five abandoned runabouts were built in line with Tamale's beautification and modernization agenda ahead of the 2008 Cup of African Nations tournament. The runabouts were among other ancillary projects to the now Ali Umama Sports Stadium. Two of these abandoned runabouts are at Lamashao, one in front of the Lamashao Divisional Police Command and another one around the Lamashao Industrial Area. There's one runabout at Nyuhani and that of Chao, and there's another one around the Ali Umama Sports Stadium Enclave. The five runabouts have since not been upgraded. The runabouts are not properly fenced. They are weedy and serves as breeding grounds for reptiles and animals grazing zone. The one in front of the Lamashao Divisional Police Command is now a resting place for mad people. Political parties, billboards, banners and posters have overshadowed these abandoned runabouts. Architectural designs in these abandoned runabouts do not give a mental picture of the high-profile personalities or symbols they showcase. For instance, in the middle of the Nyohani runabout is a supposed statue of the soccer maestro, Abedi Ayu Pele, who began his career in Tamale with the defunct Real Tamale United RTU. Abdul Karim Natogma reporting for City News from Tamale, Northern Region. And here in the studios of City TV in Adabraka, I am Umaru Sanda Amadu tonight here with Vivian Kai Loko. When we come back, we'll tell you what else we have for you. City TV is live. City TV is a free-to-air digital channel. On a digital TV, please press menu on your remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a multi-TV digibox. Tune into City TV and experience your world. City TV. It's your world.
get the backstory of the major news stories on press conference. Hear from the editors and the reporters behind the biggest stories of the week. The university needs to think and reconsider. There are girls who, women who are in, the, in our universities who have been sexually molested for grades. That doesn't matter. Press conference every Sunday at 9 p.m. with Duke Mensa Opoku only on CTTV. Welcome back to the City Newsroom. I'm Umaru Sandamadu with uh, Vivian, Vivian, who is just returning from the Tema <laughs> Beach. How was the experience like? Well, it was interesting in how people um, react to certain things they hear from people that they respect mm -hmm. or look up to. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we feel that we've gotten to a point in society where you cannot actually just use beliefs to think that certain things are happening. So, for example, if people have died over a period, you would want to look at the medical side or something with more evidence before mm -hmm. sticking to the point that it is spiritual. So this is quite um, prominent. So they totally certain... abandoned the medical explanations oh, yes, and chose yes, to they go did. the priest's way. And you could see they were living in fear mm -hmm. because we spoke to other people who said, really, they live far from the place. I mean, they're in the community. But where it happened... They are far from it, but because of what had, said, had been said and what they have seen over the period, they were confident if they don't do this, they were going to get into trouble. So the instruction is that dive into any available sea, sea. or specifically the Temamahian Sea. Or you die. Wow. Yes. That really die. scared them, didn't yes. it? Yes. And every, you know, houses, kids as young as, there were some cases we saw kids as young as five, six doing this to cleanse themselves from this. So it was very interesting. But not far from that, the, you see the fish mm -hmm. um, thing going on. The, the fish mongers the fish. were also And there. the, the filth, Sanda, the filth is still a Tell big thing. It. it was full with plastics from you and I, I guess. I mean, watching the footage uh, while you were doing the report from there, I noticed the black polythene were slowly gliding with gliding the waves. Gliding in by, you know, through the waves and all. And that's what you see, because you didn't see what some of the shots we got. Uh, a long shot would have shown you the filth at the beach, which is something I've noticed on most beaches across Accra. It's so I time. remember during the election time, I was mm -hmm. at the Teshi Beach, mm -hmm. the Nungwa Beach, mm -hmm. and it's the same thing you see. Loads of filth and swimming, you know, on the shore with the fishes. I hope that the many, maybe I'm not sure. I'm sure it's a coastal development authority that should be dealing with it. I'm I sure, guess um, so. Jerry Ahmed, you're watching us tonight. Please help our <laughs> beaches and make sure they are clean. But thank you for watching City Newsroom tonight, Vivian. Thank you too for joining us. So visit our website. We have pictures of some of the stories we brought you, videos, etc of the story at Adenta. So log on to our website, citynewsroom.com. Goodbye.